Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption weekend of events celebrating Pride Month. On Sunday, the streets are expected to be packed for the annual Pride March. But there are a host of other events happening around town. And CBS 2's Dave Carlin is live now in Greenwich Village with more on that. Dave? So many events. Christopher Street behind me, lively and getting livelier. And it's not just here, it's across our region. So here is your Pride Guide. This is Pride, powerfully magnified in Times Square with a Friday afternoon concert with big Broadway stars. The theme of the show, time to embrace, not erase. Outside Stonewall Inn, we found these prideful reactions. I love pride. I love the inclusion. Pride is the best because we get to be ourselves and be with all the people that love us. The Pride March is the big event on Sunday, starting at 25th Street and heading south along 5th Avenue. Also Sunday, Pride Island Dance on the Pier with headliner Christina Aguilera, who we caught up with Friday as she signed autographs here on the sidewalk on Christopher Street. I'm really excited for Christina's performance. I think it's going to be so iconic. Art exhibits with LGBTQ themes at numerous museums, including one here at the New York Historical Society. Broadway shows, including some like It Hot, celebrate trans and non-binary characters, and a trio of off-Broadway offerings bring LGBTQ experiences to life. Sick. Justin Huertas created the story and music and stars in Lizard Boy about a young man with green skin and scales who becomes a hero. It's a great pregame to your pride festivities. This is a place to just like feel yourself, feel your power, stand in your power, be your awesome queer self, and then go out there as the superhero you are and then party. It's Pride Month uh, and I am gay, 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 gay. James T. Lane created and starred in Triple Threat playing now at Theatre Row, about his own life as an actor, singer, and dancer. It's my life story. You can rise like the phoenix um, out, of, out of so many things that, that kind of weigh you down. And, um, you know, your story matters. For my part, I had rather bear with you than bear you. Actor Theo McKenna is in Shakespeare's As You Like It, produced by Smith Street Stage at Brooklyn's Carroll Park, with free performances and an LGBTQ twist. It's definitely a very welcoming event for all ages, all people, especially for the queer community. And another thing to tell you about at 930 tonight on Christopher Street, which I'm on down there at 7th Avenue, they are going to paint rainbow colors full of pride across that crosswalk. Live in Greenwich Village, Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. All right, Dave, thank you for that. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris, Lewis, and Sam. And today... Uh, we're we're going to be tackling a pride, and, and I, I'm going to title this "Pride and Destruction: The Final Fall." Uh, but before we begin, why don't we say hello to the LHB family? Sam, go for it. Hi, guys. I hope you're all having a good day. And you know, we do need to teach about pride because it's something that any of us can easily fall into because we're weak humans and we can get too puffed up in ourselves and then the Lord has to humble us. Um, so we need to obviously warn that, you know, so that we and others don't fall into pride, but then also point out where people have fallen into pride and, you know, what the consequences are of that. Amen. Uh, Brother Lewis. Uh, yeah. I'd like to welcome everyone back and those that are watching uh, for the first time. And, um, you know, this is like number one, we'll go back to, um, Lucifer, his fall, you know, uh, and, and everything else. And we, as Christians, fight this all the time. The world doesn't fight it, you know, but we, we have to fight it every single time. And I'm speaking for myself, okay, all the time. Amen. Yeah, we all do every single day. Once you get saved, you have your current nature, which is a saved nature, fighting against your old nature, which is, you know, on its deathbed. 
uh, and mm-hmm. it, but it still wants to survive. So you got it's struggling against you, and you that your flesh has now become your enemy, uh, so to speak. So, but uh, if you guys are new to our channel, by the way, and you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Like and share the video. That way, we circulate around YouTube and support us that way. And also comment. We love when you guys comment. Uh, we appreciate that. All right. So pride and destruction, the final fall. You know, as Lewis just mentioned, pride is the the sin of Satan himself. Lucifer had the sin of pride. Now, mind you, every other sin stems from pride. Every other sin. You know, when you start thinking about yourself and lifting yourself up and thinking you're some kind of little God, then you start to think you're entitled to everything. That's why if I want someone else's wife, hey, hey, my, my, my will be done. If I want to, you know, rob that bank because I feel like it, my will be done. And it, it, it just leads to all sin. So pride is the ultimate sin. Um, Sammy, you know, in this generation we're living in, pride is like king, isn't it? It is. Um, everyone is selfish and putting their needs and their needs first because they only care about themselves. They're not humble enough to, you know, look past themselves and be like, what does this person need? They're just like, or, you know, want they're, they're just like, I want this. I want this. I want this. And I mean, I think a lot of times people say that they need something, but they don't need it. They just want it. And they just, you know, confuse the two things. But, um, this, the world is all about themselves and what they can get from it. And, just very prideful. I mean, you, it's, it's hard to find someone who isn't prideful. Right. And Lewis, I mean, um, pride is, you can even see pride in the church in our mm-hmm. day, can't you? Uh, yeah, you, you see it uh, a lot of the time in the leadership of the church. Twist it around and get it to say what you want. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. You tap into who you really are. You know what the Bible calls you? It says you are a little Elohim. You are a little God. Twist it around and get it to say what you want. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to. Let's make Jesse. (laughs) Let's make him in our image. Wow. Let's make him in our likeness. Let's give him dominion. Domain. How many of you want to know what God looks like? Hold your hand up. Come on. Look. Don't you understand? That's what he's saying about us now. Like right now, you're looking at a person who is not just a person. Somehow, God is in me, and there's a sense in which I am like God and man all at once. To twist it around and get it to say what you want. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to. Yeah. And you are not the identity of who your parents created you to be. Hmm. Because God says that you have the DNA of Abba. Yes. You see it, it's the divine right. nature of Abba, Amen. the DNA. That- His name is in me, not on me. Like I said, like in me. Do you understand it? Angels recognize who I am. Devils recognize who I am. I am God Almighty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the pride is there. Um, you know, Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy. So it, it, it's something that you have to hate. Okay, pride is, is, will build the wall between you and God because you can't see God because of your pride. Because that means, that, like Sam says, you put yourself first. It's like, okay, I'm first, God is second. And, and this is the reason God hates pride because it, it keeps you from him. Um, it, it's like, I, like you said, I want it and I want it now. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's what I want. It, it, n- nobody else matters in the world. Over 7 billion people in the world, but you come first. You know, it's funny. That, so, that sounds like a commercial. I forgot the name of the commercial where it says, I want it. It's my money, and I want it now. <laughs> yeah. It's my money, and I need it now. 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 <laughs> you know, but, you know, um, the Bible does say that in the last days, men will be lovers of self. Mm-hmm. And we're yeah. seeing that. It's self-love time here. And uh, the go-to verse that we're going to be using today 
is Proverbs 16, verse 18. Uh, you've heard us say this scripture numerous times on this channel. It says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before mm -hmm. a fall. Now, mm -hmm. I wanted to do this uh, topic today because we're coming to the end of Pride Month, okay? Uh, you know, where the Sodomites celebrate, uh, you know, their, you know, they, they take their false victory lap around the world, you know, um, but they, they don't realize that pride goeth before destruction. So what they're doing mm -hmm. is they're celebrating in the face of God and they're storing up wrath for themselves. Aren't they, Sam? They are. Um, Proverbs 16, five says everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So God is going to punish the the proud because it, you know, um, obviously it's all in God's timing, though. It's not like as soon as someone gets pride in their heart, he's like, I'm going to zap you now. He's going to, you know, <laughs> um, it's all in God's timing because he is long suffering with us and he, you know, gives us plenty of time to change our minds. Um, but I mean, if you don't change your mind, you're going to get what's what's coming to you, which is punishment. That's right. And, and uh, Sammy brings up a good point, uh, Lewis. Uh, the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every yes. day. Uh, that's yeah. a terrifying verse, isn't it? It is. And and when you put pride, uh, like, you know, pride month, when, when you put that word before the month, it tells you a lot about the people that are celebrating this. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we see it now and, and this is an agenda that we, we know it comes from Satan that, you know, the, uh, Hollywood is a propaganda machine, uh, for Satan and pride and, and all of this stuff. Um, the government, uh, that has always been wicked. It's actually turning even more wicked today. Uh, and, and, and we see it all the time. And, and we, we see things that we thought we would never see, even though we know that things were going to get really bad at the end. Uh, and and we, we do get shocked to see things that are coming up, like the celebration that they had at the White House and the, the pride flag uh, before and above the United States flags. And mm -hmm. I don't hold any flags above anything. That's not uh, the point. But uh, we, 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 we've seen this. We, we've seen that. They put the word pride first, and then they they steal the rainbow, which is a promise from God, and they steal it and they make it their own. Mm -hmm. And this is why the wrath of God is stored up for them. They have yeah. no clue what's coming. You know, um, it, the thing is with these individuals, you know, um, they are spitting in the face of God without yeah. fear, and I fear for them. All right. Oh yeah. You know, some, some of the results of uh, pride, and I'll just go down them really quick, and we'll discuss. Uh, number one, wars. Number two, gangs. Number three, arrogance, self-importance. Number four, mm -hmm. self-love. Number five, thinking you are superior than others. Anybody remember Hitler? Okay. Number mm -hmm. six, falling into the sin of Satan himself. That was Satan's original sin, which was pride. And number seven, the final one, an eternity in the lake of fire. That's these are the results of pride. Um, and 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 Sammy, it's a terrifying thing when the, when the Bible talks about the lake of fire. That's God's ultimate mm -hmm. judgment, isn't it? It is, and you don't want to go there because it's never ending. I know there's you know the false teaching of annihilation, but that's the false teaching. You you don't just get annihilated. You're there forever. And something that I was thinking of is that, you know, like with wars and uh, a lot and all the things you listed, a lot of the people who are prideful would say that they would use God as an excuse for doing what they do. And I want to read this first, first uh, John two sixteen. for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. So all that stuff, you know, people can make the excuse of, Oh, well, you know, God told me to do this or God like with the homosexuals do they're like, well, God made, made me this way. And it's like, well, no, that's of the world. That's not of God. You're just using him as an excuse to try and get away with what you're doing. That's right. And you know, uh, Lewis, you mentioned that pro anything that goes 
uh, if pride goes before a word, then you can tell, you know, what it's about. But pride could go in the back of a word, too. Like, you have people saying black pride, white pride, okay. Spanish pride. Uh, no no other means in our community of the bridge. No other means in our community of the bridge. No more means in our community of the bridge. No more means in our community of the One race, one nation, so help us God Almighty, white power. And, and it's still the same thing, isn't it? It, it is. And um, I'm, I, I learned um because of politics in which i no longer participate in and i used to um what people when people talk about you know i, I was born in cuba um and i'm an american citizen um but my citizenship is all it's, it's in heaven it has nothing to do where where i'm at but you hear this uh, I, i'm proud to be from this country i'm talking about <laughs> christians i'm proud that i'm from this country i'm proud of my um, my son i'm proud of my daughter and it's 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 the the word and and it doesn't mean that you don't have salvation. It means that you know you need a little bit more wisdom in 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 your life. And any time that you use pride, the word pride, in a mm -hmm. positive sense, it's never ever um, good. Right again, you know you know how I feel about negative and positive. I, you know, <laughs> I, people equate positive to good and negative to bad. But again, mm -hmm. you go back to Genesis. And who was positive? The serpent. Hey, you will eat this and you will be as gods. And the negative one was God. Because hey, the day you eat of this, you will die. Uh, so uh, I don't I don't equate positive with always good and negative with always bad. But yeah, um, look, this whole generation, man, like we'll we'll have like you know people shouting, uh, you know, like the BLM, the Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter folks. They're full of pride, you know, black power, black pride mm -hmm. you know we deserve this we deserve that mm -hmm. let, let me just inform you all we deserve nothing right mm -hmm. but destruction but hell but the wrath of god that's what we deserve mm -hmm. anything good that comes your way it's a gift that's called grace and mercy mm -hmm. we don't deserve listen all of us here don't deserve to go to heaven no right we don't deserve no. it we didn't earn it. We can't earn it. Okay. But once we got it, we can't lose it. By the way, tune in next week because we're going to be tackling eternal security. There we go. Uh, but yeah, once you got it, you can't lose it. It's a gift from God. And every provision that you have, listen, even the ungodly, God shines on. He provides mm -hmm. for. They could go to a job and make money. They can get out of a bed and have breakfast. They, you know, they have food, they can grow plants and vegetables. They have the same kind of blessings in that aspect as Christians, where the Christians blessings superseded is mm -hmm. for future promises, the glorified body, eternity with the Lord, uh, you know, uh, eating without having to need to eat, but eating for pleasure. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing all that stuff. So the blessings for the Christian is way different from the general blessing from the world. Now, you know, war, like you said, like I said, wars start because of pride. And also, uh, Sammy, in a lot of our cities, you could look at Chicago, New York, California, mm -hmm. and you see a lot of gang activity. Now, think about it. Mm -hmm. Aren't gangs just miniaturized uh, war zones with people on each side fighting for a block that they think they own? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've even had that in my small town here where we've been having a... Uh, I think it's just children being stupid, but they're tagging, they're tagging streets like this is our street. And it's like, no, this is our street. So we're having all this tagging and it looks very lovely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's being prideful. Cause you're like, this is, you're claiming a section for yourself when really you don't own it. Right. Like you don't own that block. <laughs> like you don't own that street. <laughs> like you're claiming it as your own, but you have no right to it. So you're claiming something that isn't yours. You're, you're stealing, basically. And even if you did own the block, you didn't create the block. You didn't create the no. concrete that made up the block. Everything came from God. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you have to be proud about? Uh, yeah. You know, Lewis, man, I mean, <laughs> arrogance is the next thing on the list that I had here. But uh, arrogance fits in with gangs and with wars. And with people in general, yeah. they, they, they assume that they're entitled to something 
and they are they deserve it, right? I mean, uh, they, th this is their thought, and you know, you mentioned Hitler. People forget the, the man thought that what he was doing was the right thing for the whole world. That it would be his idea of the world, uh, you know, like his utopia, and and that that's pride. Um, and to when you look across the, your neighbor, and this is when you say wars between countries, and you look at another country. And you say, I want that for, for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many people I have to kill, what I have to do to get it, because, like you said, I deserve this, okay? Mm -hmm. I should have this. They shouldn't have it. And the word pride comes up again. Well, you got the unholy trinity right there, me, myself, and I. Yeah. All right? That's the unholy trinity. Uh, we're all guilty of that on some level. Yes, even Christians are guilty of that on some level um, because we're still in these fallen bodies. The only difference is a Christian should be fighting against that that old nature. Okay, there should be there shouldn't be a, a comfortableness inside of you if that's what you're going through. It shouldn't you should not agree with your flesh on anything. Um, and it's a fight, it's a struggle. And, and you know, God did that on purpose, so we will not easily give in to sin and you know and when we get our glorified bodies we won't even have to worry about temptation anymore yeah. there won't be any temptation Amen. anymore you know praise god for that um you know <laughs> self-love sammy we mentioned it and uh, again the bible says that in the last days men will be lovers of self and uh mm -hmm. women that that does include you too okay uh <laughs> you know they will be lovers of self now you see this self-love and everything today don't you you do. People constantly posting pictures of themselves on social media from every conceivable angle known to man. Um, you know, always talking themselves up like they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and you're and you know how their life's just amazing and they have no problems. And what is problems? Because their life is so perfect, because they're so perfect. And it's 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 nauseating when you see those people because you're like, you're not, <laughs> you're not that amazing. No one is. <laughs> um, but they're just so full of themselves, full of the self-love that they can't see how arrogant they are. Or if they do see how arrogant they are, they don't care. Yeah. And the Bible talks about having a proud look, Lewis. And I tell you, mm -hmm. if you look at anybody, any regular person walk from their walk to their, their head being lifted up and kind of like mm -hmm. strutting, mm -hmm. They, they, that that's that's a proud look, which tells you without even knowing them of what they think of themselves. And, you know, again, you know, men do this all the time. They strut around and try to get the women and women use their bodies yeah. to try to get what they want from men. That's all pride, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And what Sam was talking about, the fact that now we have, uh, you know, smartphones uh, and selfies, you know. Well, selfies come from the word self and selfish, you know, and this look how good I look, look what I do. And you go to Facebook or, and, you know, talking about Christians here. This is, you see this a lot on Facebook with Christians. It's all about self. Photoshop, they, 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 they Photoshop their own photos so they can look better than they actually do and they will post it. Uh, and, and and this is self love. It's just like I, I love myself so much that I'm going to make myself look better. Right, and you're not talking about regular pictures where you're, you're taking a picture of you yeah. and the family, you and the wife, whatever. <laughs> you're talking about like if you look at their page in the photo section, it's nothing but them. <laughs> yeah, same I, I, for, I would, same thing yeah. for Instagram, you know. Yeah, I I, I would say that you know um, you you want to know who you love the most in this world. Um, what's, what, what pictures do you have on your phone when you open it up? Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, Sammy, uh, you know, uh, pride also leads to sexual sins like pornography, women mm -hmm. at strip clubs and things like that, not to get too graphic, but they know there's power in their body, their beauty to get what they want. They think mm -hmm. they're like goddesses, don't they? They do. They think that they're, um, they think that they're powerful. They think that them doing what they do is empowering them when really it's degrading them. Uh, but they don't see it as that. Cause they're like, well, no one's doing it, you know, to me, I'm doing it for myself. But then they also get mad if they're just like out on the streets and then, you know, yeah. ogle at them. And you're like, okay, 
this doesn't make any sense. But um, <laughs> but yeah, they're they're so proud of how they look and that they're getting all this attention. Um, that yeah, they they think that they're goddesses essentially and that they can do whatever they want. Yeah, and uh, you know, Lewis and I, we often make this little joke. Like, listen, if if women would quit uh, the sex industry, then there would be no sex industry. <laughs> Because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, guys are in it, but they only went in it because of the women. I mean, you know, that's why that's why that is. Um, but it, it all stems from pride. You think that you are uh, this super being that everybody mm-hmm. should worship. And that's been going on. I mean, listen, the Bible talks about Jezebel. Mm-hmm. And we all know what Je- that Jezebel was full of pride, you know. And then you got Herodia and her daughter, you fast forwarding to the, New Testament with John the Baptist and had, you know Herodias had the daughter uh, mm-hmm. uh, dance seductively in front of Herod to get John the Baptist's head cut off. Um, but all of it was pride, wasn't it, Lewis? Um, yeah, you know we go back to the story of uh, the the Trojan horse, uh, and it all had to do with pride. It had to do with Helen of Troy, her beauty, how proud she was of her beauty, and how she mm-hmm. used her beauty to, I think his name was Paris or something, to fall in love with her so he would take her away from uh, the husband that she had. So it was the pride in, in her look, okay? Right. And you talk about Jezebel. We know, you know, we call it the Jezebel spirit. We know what she was like. And we also know her ending, too. And that's yep. the ending that's uh, reserved for all those who put pride before God. And she had a rough ending, man. I think she was eaten by dogs, by wild by dogs, dogs. Yes. Uh, before she, when she fell out the window and then God had some hungry dogs waiting. So, oh, there goes our takeout. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there was another, another one. I had a, I forgot the, the name of the prophet. These young uh, teenagers were messing with this prophet and the yes. Lord allowed wild dogs to come out and just tear them up as well. I forgot what, what prophet it was. But yeah, I, it was, was uh, Elijah or Elisha, uh, one of well, those. It might have been Elisha. I, I remember. Yeah, wild bears. I wild bears. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, because they were making fun of his bald head. And so then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's it. Hey, you know what that tells me? God does not play. He, he cares about every aspect of his children. Now, think mm-hmm. about it as a parent. Would you want any kind of bully making fun of your kid? When you yeah. are there looking at it, you'll do something. Right, yeah. you'll step in, you'll intervene. So these people that that purposely mess with the children of God, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be them on the day of judgment. Yeah. I really don't, especially those who have, uh, you know, aborted innocent babies. Okay, uh, the babies that God intended to be born, mm-hmm. which tells you right now that God doesn't cause everything, right? Uh, because we have choice. If God mm-hmm. allowed a woman to be pregnant, that means He wanted that baby to come to term and be born. Mm-hmm. right or you wouldn't have been pregnant um i don't care how much fornication you're having if god doesn't give you the green light to get pregnant you won't uh and, yeah. and so that's that but pride that's even prideful when you see uh women saying this is my body i mm-hmm. can do with it what i want right uh sam yeah because no matter how many times people tell them it's not your body because this is a separate human being they have their own heartbeat their own blood type their own dna no matter how much evidence they're given that this is someone else they're just like no it's my body they call it a parasite it's like it's not a parasite it's not harming you parasites harm and kill and take over the baby is growing inside of you you are nurturing it you're supposed to take care of it until you give birth not kill it that's right that's what i said they only they only care about themselves because they're like, I don't want to be pregnant. And then you're like, well, you shouldn't have done what you did to get pregnant. Now, should you? <laughs> you know, para- I can think of a few parasites uh, <laughs> and they're not babies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a, lot of them, a lot of them are in government positions. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to read this verse and I, and I want your thoughts on this, uh, Brother Lewis. It says in James 4, verse 6, but he, God, giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble what do you think that means you know um 
We we did the uh, programs uh, a while back, and we used the uh, the movie uh, The Devil's Advocate, you know, uh, and specifically Al Pacino's uh, pl- the way he played the devil. Um, Little we, information we, about God. God likes to watch. He's a prankster. Think about it. He gives man instincts. He gives you this extraordinary gift, and then what does he do? I swear, for his own amusement, his own private cosmic gag reel, he sets the rules in opposition. It's the goof of all time. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, don't swallow. <laughs> And while you're jumping from one foot to the next, what is he doing? He's laughing his sick ass off. He's a tight ass. He's a sadist. He's an absentee landlord. Worship that never. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Is that it? Why not? I'm here on the ground with my nose in it since the whole thing began. I've nurtured every sensation man has been inspired to have. I cared about what he wanted, and I never judged him. Why? Because I never rejected him. In spite of all his imperfections, I'm a fan of man! I'm a humanist. Maybe the last humanist. Who in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? All of it, Kevin! All of it! Mine! I'm peeking, Kevin. I think he actually played the devil sometimes better than the devil plays himself. But at the end of the movie, when, you know, the, uh, everything goes back to the town where it all started, uh, and, and again, he goes to the uh, Keanu Reeves character uh, and talks to him, and the end of the movie ends with uh, Al Pacino saying, Vanity is my favorite sin. Oh, you're with a crisis of conscience? You gotta be kidding. It's huge. They're gonna disbar me, Larry. Right about that. Wait a second. Can they do that? Not when I get through with the story. We gotta talk, Kevin. You gotta give me an exclusive. This is wire service. This is 60 minutes. This is a story that needs to be told. It's you. You're a star. Call me in the morning. You got it. First thing. Bye, Larry. Vanity. Definitely my favorite sin. And and and, and it's pride. And and you can't get any better than than that movie and what and what Satan represents and what pride represents because everything had to do with pride with the uh, the character that Kenner replayed full of pride in himself because he thought that you know it was all him um, when it, you know the movie shows that it was actually the devil we we need to see sin for what it is and you know people say well you know sometimes Christians see uh, sin everywhere the thing is and and this is I learned from my experience. The more sin that I see in me, uh, the more likely that I see sin in the world. It's it's just like well, when you don't see that you're you're a sinner, okay? When you because you're so full of pride, you, you don't see it in some someone else. That's why the the, the sin of pride is, is, is so dangerous. So you you can't be humble and proud at the same time. Uh, and 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 one of the things that you have to do when you come to God. It's, you, you have to be humble. You, you have to realize, I can't do this on my, uh, by myself. I do not have what it takes. I need you to do it. And, um, and like I said, when you're proud, um, you will not. You, you can't see God when pride is in front of you. So God hates that in, in, in us uh, because we, we will never go to him. So when you humble yourself, you know, God will accept that. Amen. Amen. And Sammy, you know, in Proverbs uh, 21, verse 4, it says this, And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked 
is sin. Um, that's pretty clear. It- yes, that, that pride is a sin, um, which it is. And, you know, um, when God points out sin in our own lives and our Christian lives, you know, there's, we have two options. Either we can be proud and ignore him pointing out sin that we have, or we humble ourselves and we're like, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I have this sin in my life and help me to overcome it because I can't do it on my own. And you only have those two options. But, um, recently I had spent time with a proud person and this person was impossible to deal with because they were so proud. They were, they treated everyone horribly. They were never wrong. They're always right. Um, they think it's, you know, fine to be rude because they're, they're right in their rudeness. And you can't point out anything to this person because they're never wrong. You can't be like, Hey, you're being, you know, rude, knock it off because they are just, you know, this person just thinks that they're perfect. And so it's hard to be around someone who is prideful because you can't even like, you can't even take them to God's word because they won't accept it because they're so hard hearted that they can't hear it. You know, uh, uh, Louis, um, psychology, that's a product of pride. Uh, We'd often talk about psychology and they teach self-love. They say you have to love yourself first before you can love others. And how ridiculous is that? Uh, Yeah, and and psychology tells you you're not the problem, okay? Mm -hmm. And, And that is pride, like you said. You know, that is just pride. You're not the problem. No, yes, we are the problem. Okay, our, you know, everything that we do, we, we, we are responsible for. A lot of the things that happen to us that are bad, you know, it's because we put ourselves first. Okay, so yes, no self love. Um, mm-hmm. and, and in fact, those people, uh, and, and they not Christians, I've, and I've heard people say this, you know, when I realize that by giving to others, and again, I'm not talking about just Christians. And I've heard this, when I give to others, when I think of others, my life has changed. And this is mm-hmm. just for morally people, because they stop thinking about themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, the late Dave Hunt from the Berean Call would often say this, Christians should never be depressed. Depression is a result of a person thinking right. on themselves so much that they see all the faults and flaws that are, are there. And, of course, since we're fallen people, you're going to see flaws and faults. And mm-hmm. so the cure... The cure for depression is to get your mind off of yourself and put them on Christ and his promises. Yeah. Forget mm-hmm. what other people think about you. Forget what you think about you. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, unfortunately, I've even, you know, debated uh, legitimate Christians who have different views on Bible prophecy. And even when presented with the scriptural evidence that I am showing, they refuse to even acknowledge it. It's like they see it. And they bypass it and they continue to talk about their points. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's that's a sign of pride as well. Mm-hmm. I want to go through a couple of verses and then we'll present the gospel. It says here in um, Jeremiah 50, verse 31 and 32. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all around about them. This is God speaking. This is his thoughts on pride. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37 says this. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the honor and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, back in Daniel's day, was the king that God had to humble, Mm -hmm. gave him the heart of a beast for seven years. And when God said, okay, seven years are up, the first thing he says was, I extol and praise your name. You know know how to abase all those that are humble. That means Nebuchadnezzar Mm -hmm. got saved. Okay? He got saved. He started uh, praising the God of Daniel. 
So he, he realized that's the one true God. Now it says here in uh, Daniel 5.20, and this is speaking of, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, I think his grandson. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. You're talking about a king. See, the Bible says that God sets up kings and removes kings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody in, in, in leadership position, anybody around the world, I don't care how charismatic you are. You cannot ascend to a throne without God's permission. And you can't stay there when God says that's enough. You're out of there. Even the mm -hmm. Antichrist cannot show up until Jesus Christ gives him permission. And then when the seven years are over, that's the end of that. He can't forcefully stay there. You know, God has the first and last word on everything. And I hope, hope we, that we prove that um, pride is a grievous, grievous sin against the most high God. We have nothing to be proud about. Everything that we've, we've, uh, we have, we got it by receiving it. You know, you, you, you can't go to the gym and you work out and you get this physique, but who gave you the genetics and the ability to do that? Okay. You can sit there and say, wow, I'm so beautiful. Right. Who gave you that beauty? And by the way, mm -hmm. he can remove that beauty. Okay. Uh, so yeah. be careful. Be careful. We've seen a lot of examples of that too. A lot of these Hollywood stars that they were something in their twenties and now they're in their forties and fifties and they're like trying to recapture that. Right. With plastic surgery mm -hmm. and all of this because of pride, you know, they want to live forever, but they don't want to do it. Jesus's way. That's the problem. Sammy, what must a person do to be saved? Well, a person must realize that they are a sinner in need of a savior and that that person is Jesus Christ who died, buried and rose. And you just have to believe that he did it for you. Hey, man, Brother Lewis. Um, you know. We talk about the word humble, uh, uh, and and we, we, how can you be proud when you need oxygen to live and you had nothing to do with it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So you have to go to the one that created the oxygen so you can live, okay? Like Sam said, it it's actually short and so simple, and it just... You don't need any more than what you just said. You look at yourself, realize that uh, uh, you're not all that, that you, you need to pay for those sins that you committed against God, and you can't pay for them, and Jesus did. And this is it's that simple. Amen. I mean, guys, listen, all of us were in the world once, right? Everybody you see on this screen was in the world once. There's no such thing as a person who's been a Christian all their life. When people say that, I question their salvation, okay? You can't inherit salvation from your earthly parents. If they, your earthly parents can be saved and you can be lost. Mm -hmm. One spouse can be saved and the other one lost. There, there's no, you know, there's a saying that says God has no grandchildren. He only has Amen. children. Mm -hmm. You can't, can't get into heaven on your parents' righteousness by inheriting their righteousness. It doesn't work that way. Each individual have to come to the end of themselves like brother lewis says you gotta you have to be honest and we all had to be honest uh before mm -hmm. we became christians we had to take a look and say wait a minute the, the, the problem isn't the, really everybody else the problem is me i have the problem i'm the one that it has sinned against god who's given me so many blessings and i've spit in his face over and over again i deserve hell i and once you start coming to that realization god will open his arms to you he will, he is, he's ready to accept you because mm -hmm. now you see the truth. And that's what we want you guys to see. None of us are perfect. None of us, you know, are deserving of anything good. None of us. Okay. Again, the human race since Adam, all, all we deserve is God's wrath, anger, destruction, and hell. That's what we have earned. And that's what we have that we deserve. Now, God offers mercy, grace, and forgiveness for all those who put their faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? Like Sam and Lewis just said, Jesus Christ paid it all. He did the hard part. He was perfect and is perfect. Right? 
fully God, fully man, the God man. And by the way, fully sinless man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's the one that had the bank account that could pay for our sins. Again, like Lewis says, we can't pay for him. That's why people spend eternity in the lake of fire or in hell, because you're going to be spending forever trying to pay for it. You can't. Because the price of that payment is as long as God's life is, and his life is eternal, therefore the payment is eternal, and we are yeah. not eternal. We are immortal, but not eternal. We had, a, we had a beginning, but we have no end. That's the difference between eternity, eternal, and immor immoral. I mean, immoral. <laughs> immortal. <laughs> <laughs> Immoral is right too. That's part of pride. Uh, <laughs> okay, so eternal has no beginning, no end. Im immortal has a beginning but no end. There's a difference. Angels are immortal. Humans mm -hmm. are, immortal, but only God is eternal, and that's why people will spend eternity either in heaven or in hell. Because if you get if you got saved, and we're going to bring this up next week, if you get saved, you have God's eternal life flowing through you. You can never lose it again. And you can't get cast into hell. It's eternity mm -hmm. in heaven. Eternity with joy, peace, love, excitement, everything. But then on the other side of that, if you die without the Lord, it's eternal torment. We're not talking mm -hmm. about spending a weekend in hell to see if you like it. Okay? We're talking about once you're there, you are there. That's your home. And there's no relief. There's no shady spot in hell where you could sit under a tree and sip a lemonade and say, all right, let me get my strength back up. No, you're going to be in constant, constant torment. And we don't want that for you. So my rant is over. I hope you guys have listened to what we had to say. And I hope you guys have made a decision for the Lord. And, you know, we, we, we really do care about you. And we believe that the, the next step on God's calendar is the rapture. And we want you guys to go with us when that trumpet blows and he says to come up here. Hey, we don't want you to be here for the tribulation. That's going to be the worst time on planet Earth ever. Okay? We don't want you here for that. Um, the Antichrist will be running rampant for seven years. Okay? God's judgment's going to be falling. And at the midpoint, you're going to have to submit to Satan by taking his mark or die. This is not a, it's not going to be a fun time down here. Okay? So, we want you guys to really take what we said to heart and put your trust in Jesus Christ like right now. Don't wait another five seconds. Do it right now. Okay? All right, guys. Join us next week for our topic on eternal security. And until next time, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless. God bless. God bless.